If you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create cool effects, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. So you want to make a 3D music video or animation, but you don't know where to start. Well, first you need to create an environment. Today, I'm going to recreate this Juice World Wasted music video. I've always enjoyed this music video, so I'm going to use it as a case study to teach you some fundamentals here. This is going to be a two-part video. Part one, which is this video, we're going to talk all about procedurally generating environments in Blender. And then in part two, we're going to talk all about animating the camera, animating cars, and adding in some 3D characters. If you guys enjoy, consider slapping a like on the video. It helps a huge amount with the YouTube algorithm. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. You guys know how important it is to gather assets so you can create videos fast. Well, Storyblocks features high quality stock video and templates, audio and sound effects, and images and vector illustrations. Storyblocks has a giant library to choose from with zero cap on your downloads. They even have an Adobe Premiere plugin integration, so you can get access to this giant library of assets all within your editing software. I talk about leveraging different stock images and footage in today's video to create 3D environments, so if you're looking for a one-stop shop to gather high-quality stock, you guys should definitely check this out. If you're interested, click the link at the top of my description to learn more. All right, guys, so let's hop into Blender and start building our environment. So we're going to start off here by just getting rid of all the default camera light cube, starting from complete scratch. Now, if you look at the original music video, you'll notice the most striking part of the environment in that music video is this giant winding junction. So to create something like that, you have two options. Option number one, you can cheat. You can go and try and find a free or paid 3D file of a highway or a junction, save yourself a bunch of hours of work, but it may not be exactly what you're looking for, or you may have to spend money to get exactly what you're looking for. So option number two is you can 3D model this from scratch. This takes a bit more time, but you have a lot more freedom over the overall design of what you're trying to create. So I'm going to download a free 3D asset to start with the highway and then work around that. But if you guys want to model a bridge, there's an amazing video by Ian Hubert talking all about creating highways. Highly recommend you watch that if you want to build this from the ground up. Let's go ahead and open up that road pack. Again, I'll leave this link below. All low poly, simple stuff. Let's go ahead and just select this piece and you'll see in the object properties, this is the name highway cross freeway model. So here it is. These are all the pieces in the empty. You guys can just hold down shift, select all of these pieces and click control J to join them into one, make that a lot easier. And then you can right click on this and just go to mark as asset. So if we go to our asset browser here, you guys are going to see this assets, which you can just drag and drop anywhere in the scene. If you want to get this inside any project, not this, not just this one, you'll see this says current file, you need to place this project file in your asset browser master folder. We'll go to edit preferences, file paths, and you guys are going to see your asset library here. This is the path. So just go ahead and control C to copy that. And then you just want to go to file, save as, paste this path here, and then just save this into this asset folder and you'll be able to use anything you mark as an asset here in any project file you want. So again, we'll go to file new. Let's open up our asset browser. See nothing is in the current file, but if we switch to my asset folder, these are everything I've marked as an asset. And you can just click and drag in there. Let's go ahead and set this up. For some reason this is flipped. So we'll set that to zero. See the textures, you wanna to go to our viewport shading and that looks like a good start. So let's start off by creating our water. We'll click shift A. And we'll go ahead and add in a plane. Let's open this little tab here. And let's make this like 200 because we want this to be a large scale environment. If you want, you can even make it larger. So to create a water texture from this blank plane, let's go to our shader editor and we'll click to create a new material here for a plane. I'm gonna click Shift A and add in a Musgrave texture. And then we're gonna click Shift A and add in a bump note. So let's connect the height to the height of the bump and the normal section of the bump to the normal in our main principle BSDF. You guys have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. If you don't, just go up to Edit Preferences Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler and turn that on. You guys can select your image texture here and just click Control T. That'll automatically add in a mapping and a texture coordinate node. Pretty useful for controlling the scale of everything here. So because we're working on such a large scale plane here, in that mapping node, I'm just going to click and drag down to select all those scale values at once. And I'll change the scale of all of those to something like 100 to actually be able to see all this. I also switched over to the shading tab just to visualize it a bit better. Let's go down to 50. And again, it depends on the scale of your plane. 
just so you can actually see those little etchings on the plane now. So in the Musgrave texture, you can take this lacunarity value here and just bump that up until you have the sort of detail in the water or the waves that you like. So I went with 0.3 here. Let's take our metallic value and just crank that up a bit. And then we can compensate by lowering the strength of the bump if we need to. So starting to look a lot more water-like. Let's come over to our base color here and we can choose a sort of water-like blue. To make this look a lot better, Let's go in and add an HDRI environment. So we have a background sky, we have some lighting reflecting and affecting everything in our scene. I'm going to go to polyhaven.com and I'll go to HDRIs and search for something like a sunset HDRI. And then I'll go ahead and download the one I like. So back in Blender, let's go over to our world settings and just load in that environment texture. And then we'll click open and select the HDRI we just downloaded. And we can go to the rendered shading view just to actually see that in our scene. So to actually position the sky in a way you want to, let's click this little drop down and we'll change from object to world. And then we can select that image texture, click control T with node wrangler on again to create some mapping nodes. And then we can just use that mapping node to rotate and position the sky so that it looks the way we want it to. I'll come back later and talk about creating custom skies that look a bit better, but for now this will do. All right, next I'm gonna add in some trees to our world here. So I'll search for a free 3D palm tree model. This should be abundant all over the internet, so no point in modeling it myself. I'll go ahead and download this model, and then back in Blender, I'll go ahead and go up to import and import in the tree FBX. So the tree is purple because no textures have been added in yet. So before we add those in, let's just set up our camera. We can scroll around through our scene here until we find a spot where we want the camera to be. And then we can just click Shift A and add in a new camera. Then we'll click on this View tab in Object Mode. We'll go to Align View and then Align Active Camera to View. And just like that, we have a camera where we were looking at pretty nice and easy. So now let's go check out this palm tree here. I'll select it, I'll go to the shader editor, and I'll just load in those missing maps from our materials, which came from the download from CG Trader. Now you'll notice here we need to get rid of the black that are from the PNG texture of the leaves. So just go to your material tab here. We're gonna scroll down to settings, and we're gonna change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip. All right, so we have our palm tree. Next, we're going to scatter and project a bunch of these onto our plane so that we have a giant water oasis with palm trees sticking out of it. This is a great technique for, for adding things to that large scale environment, whether it's grass, different trees, whatever. To do that, we're going to use a particle system. So let's select our plane and go down to the particle systems tab and click the plus to make a new one. Let's switch this to hair. And you'll see if I scroll down here, for some reason, our plane is flipped the wrong way. You can see those little hair particles on the back end. So let's just go back to our object properties and flip the plane upside down. So now back in our particle system, we can control the number of emissions. So this is going to be ultimately the number of trees that will be on this plane. We'll bump that down to 100. Let's create a new collection here, and I'm going to name that trees. And then let's take that palm tree model and place that into the trees collection. Next, let's go down to the render tab in our particle settings and set the render as to collection. And then we'll pick the trees collection as our instance. And now you can see our trees are scattered across our plane. They're just rotated the wrong way. Under instance collection, just check on object scale and object rotation. You can also use the scale under render to make these the size you'd like. So let's just select our original palm tree and click R. And then we can rotate all of our trees upright just like this. And we'll fix the scale so it's appropriate with the scale of everything else. And if you need to, you can change the seed here or the number just so you have the positioning of the trees the way you want them to be. So next, let's add some realistic reflections in that water and give it a bit more of a nicer look in our render. So in Eevee, you guys can go to your render settings. You can turn on ambient occlusion. You can turn on bloom for some glow. And you can turn on screen space reflections for a rough sort of reflection onto the water. I think it does look a lot better in cycles. So I'm actually going to switch over to cycles. Switch over to GPU compute. We can lower down the viewport sampling so it doesn't take long to load all this. And we can load down the render sampling to like 150 and check on denoise. All right, so now let's create another piece of the environment, that being the mountains in the background. So we're gonna create another plane here and we can just keep the size to something like 20 to keep it simple. On this plane, we'll go in and add a subdivision surface modifier. We'll change it to simple and give it like a level of two. And in our material properties, let's create a new material for this plane. 
and we'll name this mountains. Let's go down to settings and change the displacement from bump to displacement and bump, and then let's check out this shader. So just like the water, we're gonna do something similar, and you can see how this is one of those fundamentals for building environments from the ground up. We're gonna click Shift A and add in a noise texture, similar to that Musgrave texture. Then we're gonna click Shift A and we're gonna add in a displacement node. We'll connect the displacement to our material outputs displacement, and then we'll connect the factor from our noise texture to the height of our displacement. Make sure you're in the rendered shading view here. If you're not, you're not actually gonna be able to see the displacement. I think you also have to be in cycles to do this as well, but I'm not positive. So let's put the mid-level to zero and we'll bump up the scale and you can see how it's already starting to deform. Let's bump up the detail to something like 12 to 16 really get that rocky sort of look, and then we can play around with the scale. So in our modifiers, you can subdivide even more if you want to smooth out some of those jagged edges on the mountains, if they're getting a little bit too pointy, and then just play around with these sliders until you get something that you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up, and then we'll click G, and we'll just position these mountains where we want in the scene. And then side note here, if you're in your camera view, you can click open the view tab in the top right and then just extend the end if it's getting cut off by the drawback. This is helpful when creating large scale environments like this. So now I'm just gonna click Shift D and duplicate those mountains and place them in the scene where I'd like. I'm also going to click Shift D, duplicate the plane and just move that across the Y axis. And optionally, you could also use array modifiers if you don't wanna duplicate and move them around manually. So next let's add some more lighting. I'm gonna click Shift A and we're gonna add in a sun. You guys can take this yellow dot and point it where you'd like the sun to point so you can control the shadows in your scene. Let's take the color and make a bit more sunset colored. And then I'll play around with the angle and increase the strength to around two. So looks pretty good. Now another great tip for controlling your background, especially the sky, if you guys don't want to use an HDRI environment, you guys can instead just find some royalty-free stock images of any dramatic looking sky that you want. So I'm going to save a few of these cool ones here. Then I'm going to click Shift A and add in a plane. We'll scale that up to like 100. Let's go ahead and rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis and then we'll move this in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and just scale the X so that it fits the length of our background that we need it to. And then let's go to our material property and create a new material. I'll click Shift A and I'll load in an image texture and I'll connect that image texture into the base color as well as the emission. Let's go open up any of those sky images we just saved and looks pretty cool. Because we plug that into the emission, it's actually going to cast realistic light onto our environment. Just make sure the horizon level of your background image is somewhat matching the horizon level of your 3D environment. We're about done with our end environment here. If you guys want to extend any of the roads, of course you can add in an array modifier onto it or just go in and model and extrude yourself if you wanna add any custom adjustments to a specific part. If for any reason there's a gap between your array modifier and the road, you guys can change that offset. I went for something like negative 0.8 to kind of close that gap. It may intersect in some parts, so just be careful depending on the piece you are using. And that's about it. This gives us a nice starting point to go in and add our animations and create an overall nice 3D scene. Keep in mind here, you don't need to make everything look like a final product in your 3D software. That's what Adobe Premiere and After Effects and all those finishing touches, post-production tools are really for. So I'm going to end it here. Like I said, the next video we'll talk about adding in some car animations, something that I see in a ton of music videos. I think that'll be helpful for a lot of you guys. And then we'll talk about some unique camera movement animations that I saw in that music video that I thought were pretty cool and useful. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.